Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I really want to talk to you about what exactly is level of analysis. So this is part of my Nerd Out Wednesday series. I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship. And I just talk about things that I find really interesting in science, uh, particularly within the social sciences. And this particular topic I think is really kind of interesting because it sort of cuts across many of the sciences. We often think about the level of analysis in any particular field and I'm going to get into what do I mean by level of analysis and get into some of these particular fields. Uh, moving forward and you know where are we moving in science at this point in terms of the level of analysis that most scientists most researchers are choosing so what exactly is the level of analysis well um, for me and my personal definition and I think it kind of resonates with a lot of different people the level of analysis is really about choosing the focal point that you're looking at in terms of analyzing the data or the particular phenomenon that you're looking at so how you're analyzing the particular phenomenon the environment that you're looking at so it's kind of basically thinking about the level of abstraction uh, that you're using or the way that you're sort of generalizing from the particular phenomenon that you're looking at, right? So you're um, either taking a really sort of high level, right? So you're taking the sort of 10,000 foot level in terms of analysis or looking really sort of fine grain and looking really sort of at the minutia of any particular phenomenon that you're looking at. And in general, across most fields, and I'll get into some of these um, as I have um, studied a lot of different things at this moment. Um, so most fields have basically three kinds of level of analysis, and this is cut across most fields of science. So the first one is a micro field or micro level analysis, and this is where you look at really sort of fine grain details and things like that. Um, and then there's also a macro sort of level of analysis and where you're looking at sort of the larger, bigger picture sort of items. And then in between, there is what is called the meso level analysis. So M-E-S-O level of analysis. And it's kind of in between. So it looks at sort of phenomenon or things that sort of don't fit in sort of the macro or the micro side. And that's what we call it, right? So, um, you know, I'm, I studied, so just give you sort of a brief background. Um, I studied engineering, chemical engineering back in the day. And then in my graduate school, I studied sort of all sorts of things, sociology, as well as um, economics and things like that, and kind of had a smattering of many different fields, as well as in my field in organizational theory or strategy or innovation. We cover all sorts of different fields, um, and we cover all sorts of different levels of analysis. Anybody that studies organizations and studies how they work, you have to be very comfortable with sort of flipping through different level analysis and, and using anything that's applied. You have to be very, very comfortable to sort of flip and understand things in many different levels of analysis. So in economics, there's microeconomics, right? So microeconomics is really concerned about how individual people fulfill their particular needs in life. Um, and that's kind of, you know, it's kind of a broad definition, but it's really interested in how people go day to day in terms of making decisions to sort of um, choose one thing or the other to help them fulfill their particular needs and give them better what is called utility, give them sort of some sort of uh, better well-being, I guess. And then in macroeconomics, which you might have heard about, is sort of thinking about how the sort of the, the process of, of the economy actually works as a whole. So, so how, you know, maybe the GDP of a country, so how much the country is actually producing over time and how that sort of moves, how we can sort of change the needle and GDP in, in a particular country. And you might look at things like, you know, fiscal policy, which is how, you know, the banking system works, for example. Um, you might look at sort of, um, Sorry, our monetary policy, which is how the banking system works, or, or fiscal policy, which you're looking at how the government works, and you see how those kind of things manipulate, how you can manipulate those kind of things to, um, uh, to, to sort of spur the growth of the economy. Or you might look at things like maybe knowledge in the economy and how that spurs sort of growth 
within the economy, investing in education, for example, whether that actually grows the economy or not. So there's lots of different macro things that you might look at in macroeconomics. Um, in sort of micro sociology, for example, people are concerned with, you know, how people choose to belong together at the micro side. You know, what are some processes that allow people to sort of choose one thing or the other in, in, in or stick together in, in, in an organization. It might be things like looking at um, social movements, for example, why they might pursue or go into a social movement or macro sociology. You might look at sort of the population as a whole, how it sort of congeals together, looking at macro trends within sociology, you know, maybe suicide trends across um, and again, if you're using, if you're thinking about suicide, I know I should mention that at this moment, please do consult a, consult, uh, um, you know, an, a, an, an appropriate person if you're, if you're thinking about it or the spurs that idea. So, um, you know, with, with, so we might look at sort of macro trends and how that sort of changes in, in the, um, macro sociological environment, for example, if you're looking at macro sociology. Um, in political science, you might sort of look at the individual level, um, whether you look at the state or you look at sort of the global level, the global economy as a whole, or global sort of environment as a whole, that is the macro level, right? So there's lots of different things, even in the physical sciences or in any particular sort of natural sciences, we might think about these micro mes meso levels, right? So, um, and again, you know, being an engineer, we had to sort of cover these kind of things, right? So in, in, in chemistry, for example, um, you might look at how atoms sort of work together and the properties of atoms, for example, the micro level might sort of work together. But then you look at, at the macro level, you look at sort of airflow, sort of flows through, and that might be physical chemistry or um, fluid dynamics, for example, how that sort of all the mo molecules sort of fit together and how it sort of makes um, fluid flow throughout a particular thing, right? So it's, you can look at any, uh, most fields will have this level of analysis and it's up to you to choose which one you prefer. But in general, um, there is sort of two themes that are happening within the literature uh, as of, you know, the, the because of different things like how we analyze data and things like that and sort of having better models. Um, and this has probably been happening you know, in the natural sciences for the last 50 years, in the social sciences, probably in the last 20 years, we're always a little bit behind in the social sciences. Um, you know, we are moving towards more cross-level kind of um, theories where we look at e the, the either the meso level, which is the in-between and looking at things like groups, for example, how they function together, um, or how the micro level sort of flows in and explains macro stuff, right? So there's a general trend. The second thing is that there's a general trend towards micro theories that's happening within the literature, um, partly because we have really good uh, metrics and better sort of understanding what's going on. And we can, we can look at sort of models at the micro level. So how individuals work in an organization, for example, and how that sort of transfers through in order to create a larger organization. And we can explain it at the micro side and then it sort of populates up and explains things that, that are going on at the macro side. And this has been going on um, for a while now and we're moving towards a sort of micro view um, across the board in, from what I understand in, you know, in economics and sociology and organizational theory, for example, my field, Across the board, we're starting to look at in explaining things at the micro side a little bit better so that we can explain what's going on within the macro um, side. So, so that's generally what's going on. That's the level of analysis. If you haven't caught what that is, it's sort of at the uh, level of generalization or abstraction that you have to explain a particular phenomenon. And there are generally, you know, many different levels of analysis that you can look at, but in most fields, there's a micro and a macro version and some sort of in-between version, meso version. So um, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up as well as check out what I'm doing with the Reciprocity Project. The E is written with a three. I do appreciate that. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye.